So Hilbert, um, the Hilbert Polya conjecture with regard to Riemann is simply that Riemann's function, which is it's a mathematical function. So what he means is um, by that, just simply in mathematics, you you have domains of numbers. You can take the natural numbers one, two, three, four, five on um, into infinity, or you can take um, the uh, the counting numbers or you can take the integers and then you can perform some sort of function on them. The simplest way of expressing it is to say let's say you were taking the counting numbers and you wanted to apply the function that each counting number you chose for a computation you would multiply that counting number by 59 and that's a function you know so you'd be symbolized in mathematics by f of x. And in the zeta function, you have a very complex function that generates all kinds of different numbers. But when you when one half is placed in the function, this is a very simplified way and the only way that I understand it. And I've been studying it a long time, and it's much more complicated than that. But to say some to say anything important about it, you have to kind of say what it is, and that's what it is. And Hilbert. Um, Hilbert and Paglia, George Paglia, this mathematician uh, from Hungary, he thought that he could find a, a way. Um, he, he could something could be found in nature that was actually something that the function answered to. You know, maybe the growth of trees or the growth of flowers, like the pattern on a sunflower, or something was obeying that function in the very way. Um, that it was produced in nature. And so I, he was really coming up with this kind of uh, simplistic idea for the function that it applied to something like the very points of the electron and positron in space in the way they formed a unity of space-time uh, is what I think he meant by that. And so today mathematicians and physicists are kind of looking for, hey, is that true of magnetism? And you'll see a lot of people working online today trying to show what magnetism is and how, how it how it weaves all of space-time together um, as a unity. So maybe the function, that's what the function does, is it, 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 it generates the space-time points of the universe as the universe creates itself out of the light points that we see in nature, or the photon points that we see in nature, which are the electrons and positrons that form the events we experience as happening, as happenings in our lives, and happenings in nature, and happenings in the stars, and so on. So this very, uh, this very statement of Riemann would prove to have been a very, an incredible intuition on his part, because it, so much of the sciences will then, uh, physics at least, so much of physics will end up being related to the product to that particular function that it will eventually have a very um, very uh, harmonious and synthet synthetical relation to all of the sciences and to all the forms in nature and that's what Polya thought and I think it's reasonable but I I don't accept things in science as just simply being reasonable or even being beautiful but ma many times in the past there has been beauty has been something that could be applied to um, things that you know like mathematical functions and purely numerical things that have been discovered in science as Oswald Spengler the um, author of Decline of the West says oftentimes those domains of mathematics are worked out and then 300 years later you know Chadwick or Rutherford working with uh, electron uh, working with proton working with neutron working with the atom end up finding oh wow look at those domains 300 years ago they worked out the mathematics that we have to apply to this thing now so sometimes um, what you're proving in the sciences is you're attempting to prove something that later will end up having this kind of significance and that's what I think is the case today um, that, that that's what needs to be done with respect to Riemann that something basic about it that it can't be denied would be a step further toward proving it because at one once you do that you can actually um, 
you can actually proceed to derive the implications of the statement and then those will all be true too because they descend from something that's logically true and so what you can trust the implications of it because it cannot be denied and that would be an important truth in the sciences if we can attain it um, I didn't know if I wanted to say any more other than the fact that it's it's an easy thing it's an easy thing to conceive of how this proof could be given but it's a lot it's an enormous amount of work someone like myself would never be able to accomplish it while I'd be able to articulate that this is a reasonable thing for a person of a sup of supreme competence in mathematics like a Raymond Smolian a Ted Kaczynski or someone else to work on for five four or eight years and then from in that time they may have the basis for a proof. It's just going to take a long time to prove it because we haven't formed like a, just kind of like a dream team to work on it. And that's what we would need in order to get it done more quickly. You know, 50 persons working on it after a method has been established is much different than one person working on it all his life. You know, 40, 50 years and then providing the proof 50 years from now, we may need things in the sciences that based on it 10 years from now so it's better to get it done more quickly than to wait in my view